My name is Neil Malik from Knack Training, and in today's Everyday Office video, I'm going to be working with groups in SharePoint to grant permissions to individuals. So any SharePoint site that you're on can have unique permissions placed on it. In order to see what those permissions are in the first place so that you might decide to tweak them, you click on the gear in the top right hand corner of the screen and should click on Site Settings. Now, if you have the necessary permissions, once you get to your site settings, you'll notice that there's people and groups as well as site permissions here. Now, the way I want you to think about permissions in SharePoint is that every person who wants to join your SharePoint site falls under one of the umbrellas that you think of the people in your SharePoint environment. So maybe they're a visitor to your SharePoint site and they can see what's going on, but they can't contribute to it. Or they're a contributor and uh, they can add things and they can edit things, but maybe they can't approve of documents. Or maybe they are the full-blown owner of a SharePoint site and they should have full control over that site. Now, it's a tempting idea to take an individual if I click on people and groups right here, you'll see that um, there are individuals here listed out. And it can be tempting to put permissions onto each individual. But instead, what you should always be doing, as you can see here on the left, is creating a group that those people fall into. And then granting permissions to the group instead of to each individual person. And this holds true even in the event that there's only one person who qualifies as that type of person, as that member of the group. Because over time, you have to remember, things will fluctuate. People will leave the organization, people will join new teams, and there's constant flux in who should have different permission levels on your SharePoint environment. So if I go back, I'm going to click the back arrow here and go to Site Permissions, I never want to grant permissions to an individual here at the top of the screen. Instead, I want to create a group of people and then decide who are members of that group. So if, for example, I decided that there were um, some members who needed to have uh, approval rights, I could go here to the Create Group button. I could create a new group called San Pedro, and yes, that's how they say it in Southern California. I don't know why. San Pedro uh, approvers. And these are members who can approve new content. Now, the owner of that group, as you can see here, is listed out as a single individual, but it's a good idea to, again, use that group idea. In SharePoint, there's always an owner group for your site. So I'm going to close this or kill that and type in San Pedro O. And as you can see, San Pedro Owners is one of your options there. And so what I'm going to be doing here is saying that anybody who's a member of the owner group is now the owner of this group of people. And think about how that improves things. Again, because I didn't say that one individual person is the owner of the group. Now, if Neil Malik, me, uh, if I move on, if I leave the group, somebody else can join the owner's group and they can take over my responsibilities with really no uh, pain felt. So here I'm creating a group of people in the same way that there's the San Pedro owner's group. Now there's going to be a San Pedro approver's group and they're all capable of the same thing. Notice here that um, currently only members of the group can see who are in the group and only the owner of the group can add or remove people from that group. Then I just come down here and I click the checkbox for the permission level that allows people to approve of documents and I click create. Now there is a group of people of which I'm the only one and I can click new here in the top left hand corner to add any individuals I like. So maybe I'll go with uh, Bruce and Steve. Then click share and now Bruce and Steve are approvers on the San Pedro site. In the same way that there are members of the site, as you can see, owners of the site, 
and visitors to that site. Again, if I go back to the gear in the top left hand corner and I go to my site settings, I have those two areas, the site permissions where I can create groups and decide what their permission levels are. And I have people in groups. And if I go into people in groups, that's the environment I was just in a second ago, where if I realize somebody new needs to be an owner of the SharePoint environment, I simply click on San Pedro owners, then click on new and add a new person and click share. It's also important to recognize that here Ali Person might be a member of the owners group, but she also might be a member of the members group. See here, Ali Person is in both the members and the owners groups. And some people think that maybe there's a conflict there, but in SharePoint, your permissions are always, always add up. They're always additive in nature. So if Allie is a member of the members group, she can do everything a member can do. And if she's a member of the owners group, she can do everything an owner can do. If I remove her from the owners group, she's still sitting in the members group and still has all of those permissions. And so that's how you deal with groups and permission levels inside of SharePoint. You always create a group of people who are capable of certain things. You can see the video about setting permission levels that I created yesterday. And then decide who is a member of that group and who's out of that group.